JavaScript just added a brand new keyword called using for creating a variable that can replace let and const for specific scenarios. And it's really great for those scenarios, but there are a few things that they did with this, which are really weird. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what that using keyword is, as well as explain some of the really weird stuff they did that I don't really think is a good idea. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in order to even understand the using keyword, we first need to figure out what code it is trying to solve. So if we look at our code right here, you can see we have this write file function which takes in a path for a file we want to write to. You can see it's going to open up that file with the read permission and the write permission. We're going to be writing some random text to that file and then we're going to make sure we close out of that file so we don't have any open handlers to our file because if we open a bunch of files and never close those handlers that's a problem because now no other part of a program on our computer can access those files because they're currently being accessed by this function right here so it's really important to make sure you close your files whenever you access them and if we look over here inside this files folder you can see we created a file with that text right there and if i were to change this to say something else for example and I give this a save, you can now see that it says something else inside of that file. So at least we know that this code is working. The problem comes, like, let's say we wanna to add to this code where if we have a temp file, we want to do something different than if we don't. So let's come in here, we'll create two. We'll call one temp.txt and we'll call one a.txt. And we'll check here to see if the path includes the type text inside of it, I'm sorry, temp. If we know that this is a temp file, well, I just want to return. I don't wanna do anything else. Then what we can do is down here, we can actually write some more information to this file. So we'll just say that we want to write into here the text of permanent because we know that this is a permanent file and we're going to make sure that we do that on our file. There we go. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to go ahead and look and you can see that this says text and permanent and our temp file does not say permanent. So you may think that this is working just fine, but there's actually a huge problem with the way this program works. If we go ahead and we look at our code a little bit closer to see exactly what's going on, I'll even minimize this down here because we don't really need to have this open you'll see that it first opens up our file, it writes to our file, and then if it's a temp file, it's returning, which means it's never getting to the point where it's actually closing our file. So if we want to make this actually work, we need to move this close code up into here so it's duplicated in these two places. And this is a really easy bug to fall into because you know we didn't really think about this whole closing thing, we just thought we need to return early. So if you have a bunch of scenarios where you're returning early or doing other different things, you have to copy around this closing code everywhere. And like, let's say there's an error inside of our code. Like I just typed something in wrong here like this. This throws an error. Now we're never reaching the point where we're closing our files. So we now need to wrap everything inside of a try catch to make sure we handle all of that properly. And overall, it gets quite complicated how we need to actually do everything inside of here. So instead, there's this new using keyword that essentially takes care of all of this cleanup process for you automatically. So the way that this using keyword works is instead of using const here, I would actually use the word using. And this using keyword just says I'm going to be using this file. And what happens is once this file becomes out of scope, so I no longer have access to this variable and it's being cleaned up by the garbage collector, then what it's going to do is it's going to do all of the closing and cleanup, for example, closing my file for me. Now, in order to make sure all this syncs up properly, you need to make sure a variable you're using actually is configured in the right format. So let's go ahead and we'll create a function for actually opening a file for us so we can do all that extra configuration behind the scenes. The one nice thing though is in the future when this using keyword becomes more widespread, because right now it's extremely experimental and not supported anywhere, is that certain libraries like this file system library will just support this natively for you so you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. So what we can do is we can create a brand new file. Let's just come into here and we'll call this open file.ts. And we'll just export from here a function called open file. And I'm pretty much just gonna copy over exactly what we have here. So I want to create a brand new file just like that. And we'll say const file is going to be equal to that. Let's make sure we import that FS library. There we go. And then we also need to make sure we get the path in here like this. There we go. So now we have a file that we're creating and we could just come down here and return this file, but that doesn't allow us to do this cleanup. Instead, in order to do this automatic cleanup, you need to return either a class or a function, and that needs to have a specific property defined on it. So we're just gonna return a function to show you the easiest, most simple version of this. This function will have the handler for our file, so we'll just call this handle and we'll set it to our file. It doesn't really matter what you call this, this is just the normal thing we want to return. The important part though, is we also need to specify a symbol on here. So we're going to use the symbol property to define a symbol. And in the future, when this is actually supported, there will be a dispose property on our symbol. So we can just say symbol.dispose like this, and that is going to actually work. But right now we obviously don't have access to this dispose property because it's experimental. So one thing that we can do is we can just polyfill it. 
So what I can do is I already have the polyfill written out. So I'm just going to copy the code directly from this polyfill. I'm just going to paste it into here. We can put this wherever we want, but in our case, we just need to make sure that we have this symbol.dispose actually doing something for us. That's all that really matters. This will be implemented in the browsers as soon as it's actually available. Then if we just make sure we ignore any TypeScript errors, again, because this is something that's not part of the browser yet, we can define this as a function. So we can come in here, define this as a function, and now whenever my file is essentially no longer in scope anymore, it'll call this function and automatically do cleanup for me. So to prove that, I'm just going to console log inside of here, dispose, so we can know when this function is being called. And then what I can do is I can actually close this file synchronously. So I'll say close sync of our file just like that. Now, if I give that a save, I can go back into our script and I can import that open file function just like that. And then I can use that here instead of the other way that I was opening my file. And now it's giving me this file. And if I hover over this file, you can see that it has this weird thing right here. This is just the symbol. Pretend this doesn't exist in the future. It wouldn't actually show up. And then we have this handle right here. So instead of using our file, we just want to use the handle portion of our file because that's actually going to get us the actual file itself. And now everywhere we were closing our file, we no longer need that code. So now if I give that a quick save and I make sure I pass in just my path here and nothing else, you should notice that in my console, you can see it says dispose twice. That means that it's actually cleaning up my files because what's happening is I'm saying I want to use this file. And by saying that, I know that this file should have a symbol on it with the text of dispose. It's a dispose symbol. So with that in mind, I use this file exactly the same as normal, but using knows that there's a special function I have defined on here. And that function gets called immediately as soon as this file is no longer in scope. So it goes throughout this function, file still here, file still used. And as soon as we either call return or get to the end of this function, well, this file is no longer usable anywhere else because it's only usable in the function. So when we leave the function, it obviously leaves scope. So what happens is JavaScript is smart enough to go, okay, this file no longer exists. Let's clean this up by calling the dispose function. It's logging out dispose, and then it's making sure it closes the actual reference to that file so it can be used by other parts of our program. This is really important, like if you're doing a database connection or you're doing like a WebSocket connection, anything where you're making these connections that you need to make sure you close or disconnect from, this is a really clean and easy way to handle that. And I actually really like that this is coming to JavaScript. To really kind of show you exactly what's going on with this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a bunch of different files that I open. So I'm just going to kind of remove all the code that we have here. And instead, I'm just going to call open file. I'm just going to pass it in some different numbers. So we'll just do like A, for example, and we'll say that this is using a is equal to that. And I'll just do this a couple times. So we'll have like B, C, and D. And I'll make sure that these all open different files. So we'll say D, C, and B, just like that. But importantly, I'm actually going to put C and D inside of their own scope. By using brackets like this, I'm just defining a scope, which means I can only access C and D from within these brackets. If I were to try to like access C down here, you'll notice that this variable doesn't exist. And it'll even tell me, you know, like there's an error. There's no C down here. But if I use C inside of here, obviously it works because it's within that scope. Now let's do this one more time for good measure. We'll come down here with E. So we'll say E and E. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come into open file and I'm just going to change around our console logs. So I'm going to say console.log. I'm going to say plus, and then I'm just going to put the actual name of the thing. So we'll say here, our path. And then I'm going down here, use a minus to essentially say that we're cleaning this up. We can kind of see what's happening. We have the pluses and the minuses. And if I expand up this output here, and I just resave this, you'll see that what's happening is first, we are creating our file A, B, C, and then D. That makes sense. We're using A, we're using B, we're using C, we're using D. Then after we're done using D, you can see we get to the bottom of this scope, which now means that C and D are no longer available in our program because they're outside of their scope. So we need to do our cleanup process. So now you can see it's removing D and it's removing C. Okay, now we're on this line right here where we create E. So now you can see we're creating E. And then finally, we're at the end of our program, which means we're outside of all of our different scope. So we're cleaning up E, B, and A. So you can kind of see how this is working. As soon as a variable is no longer accessible, it's outside of its scope. It just completely removes it by calling this cleanup function, which we have called dispose here. Now let's imagine we're in a scenario where we have an error inside of our code. Like let's say right here in between C and D, we just throw a new error. This could be for any reason, but our code is erroring out for some reason. Normally, this is a really hard thing to make sure all your different file handlers are closed properly. But with this using function method, it's automatically handled for us. When I save, you can see we're getting an error. But if we look at the output, we're creating A, B, and C. That's fine. And then we get to this error. This error gets thrown and the code goes, oh crap, we need to clean everything up. So it removes C, B, and A. So it automatically handles all the closing in any scenario you could ever run into. This part of using, I absolutely love. But the part I don't love is what happens if you have asynchronous code. So if we go back to open file, we can obviously close our file without doing it synchronously, and we can do it asynchronously as well. So we would need to like await this, for example. And this is asynchronous code. 
To do that, we need to use an asynchronous dispose method, and luckily, there's actually one that's built in. So we can just say, instead of dispose, we'll say async dispose, and we'll say that this is an asynchronous function, just like that. By doing this, we're essentially saying that we want to clean this up asynchronously by using async await. Super straightforward and simple stuff. But obviously, the way we handle this is going to be a little bit different, because if I just save and I make sure this error is no longer here, things aren't going to work as we expect them to, because we're not making sure that we handle these asynchronously. So the way that we get around this with JavaScript is if we want to open something up asynchronously, we need to put the await keyword in front of using. So if I just put this inside of a function, we can actually use the await keyword and I make this an async function. And then I'll just call it down here. There we go. What I need to do is I just need to prefix all of these usings with the wait keyword. And now it's going to work as I expect. You can see A, B, C, D, then we clean up D and C, create E, and then clean up the last three that we have left. Now, the reason I don't like this, if we look at the code, is the await keyword here doesn't actually wait at all. It's just saying that when we get to the end of the scope, then we're going to do some awaiting. And you'll notice this because I can come in here and I could just say like here. Now, if I look at the actual output, give this a save again, you'll see it says it's creating A and then we're printing out here and then it's creating B, C, D. There's no actual awaiting going on in this specific scenario. The awaiting happens when we clean up A all the way down here at the very bottom. So I don't really like the way that they use this await keyword here because they're using the same exact keyword you use for awaiting promises, which waits in line, which means all of this code must actually wait for this code up here. But really what this await keyword is saying is when we get to the very end of the scope where A is being used, then we want to do our awaiting. We don't want to do it until all the way at the very end. So it's a little bit confusing in my opinion why they use this await keyword here. I really wish they would change this, but that's what it is right now. And it seems like that's what it's going to be when they actually implement this in the real JavaScript language. Other than that though, I really like that this new keyword's being added, especially as it starts to get added into the actual features built into the browsers and into Node, because it'll make working with things like files and so on so much easier. Now, if you enjoyed that and want to dive into the cutting edge of JavaScript, I'm going to have some other cutting edge features linked right over here for you to check out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.